what was your favorite part of uh, Pompeii's Pillar? I'd say it was the Mormons. They were really cool. They were cute. They were fat. They were fat. I wonder what Marmot tastes like. Pitless <laughs> as a clock, no. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a minute of Colorado Martini. So we're at Pompeii's Pillar and we are going to go um, down the walkway and we're going to go see Clark's um, engraving of his name up on the rock. Clark who? Clark Griswold? <laughs> no, it's not Clark Griswold from uh, the movie Vacation. This is not Wally World. Uh, no, William Clark as in Lewis and Clark Expedition. That was that was his first name was William. William. And who the heck's Herbert? <laughs> That's what's written on the rock. <laughs> Hello, wishes. Hello, how wishes, Clark. <laughs> what would be really cool is Sacagawea was with him, and if she had, you know, knew how to write, do it did an X. <laughs> <laughs> That's her mark. Actually, I think I've written things where she would do an X for her mark and stuff. So, but that would have been really cool if there was an X up there and it was Sacagawea. But a lot of the uh, carvings have melted away because of sandstone and from the water and the, the weather the heat, the heat. <laughs> um, a lot melted. of the rock is broken away um, so right now there's about 2,000 uh, carvings uh, but think about how much more there was and what was lost um, but you know pretty cool stuff let's go take a look I am with you. I brought that guy in with me, that mosquito. Yeah, see the blood on the windshield? Uh-huh. I'm leaving him and the blood there as a reminder to the others. <laughs> so they won't bug us. Don't go bug in. us, get it? Bug no. us? <laughs> you don't want to go in that car. That some bitch smushed you. <laughs> Look at baby, I've got all these mosquito bites from the, from the Pompeii Pillars. Yeah, it's amazing what a journalist will do for her uh, story. <laughs> I can see it now. I'm here in the Montana Outback fighting West Nile virus just to get my story about the Pompeii Pillars. <laughs> and you paid the price of journalism. <laughs> so good. Do note that throughout the video, it sounds like I'm saying Pompeii's Pillars, but it's Pompey's Pillars. Pompey's Pillar's claim to fame is its prominent sandstone rock face that contains the signature of Captain William Clark of the Lewis and Clark Expedition. Clark's 1806 inscription is the only physical evidence remaining of the Lewis and Clark Expedition, which is also known as the Core of Discovery. The rock also contains around 2,000 other carvings from various historical expeditions, camps, and points in history. It includes everything from petroglyphs to the class of 1923. The pillar overlooks the Yellowstone River and can be found about 25 miles east of Billings, Montana, and only an hour northwest from the Bighorn Battlefield National Monument. Pompey's Pillars is so close to the Little Bighorn Battlefield that we were able to do both sites in one day. Lewis and Clark decided to divide the party into two groups. Clark took one of the groups down the Yellowstone River and arrived at Pompey's Pillars on July 25, 1806. Clark decided to name the Pillars Pompey's 
tower after Sacagawea's son, Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau, whose nickname was Pomp. Clark found that the Native Americans had engraved figures of animals, so he decided to engrave his own name into the rock. He wrote in his journal that he placed his name, date of the month, and year near the Native American markings, which authenticates the carving. So as you come in, there's a really nice picnic area. So if you're looking to have a picnic lunch, um, they have a nice display of the sugar beet industry that was here um, back at the turn of the century. And they have some nice, uh, ah! They have some great dogs. <laughs> they have some nice men here. <laughs> um, they have a nice display of the equipment they used to use, um, but it's nicely shaded because um, it does get warm out here. Um, so if you, if there's no services out here, so make sure that you bring a picnic lunch with you. So you're able to bring your pooches um, as long as they're on a leash. Pooches if you got them. What is that, is that a marmot? So if you come here, he, they live under that rock. So there's the teepee display, and here is the visitor center. Wow, that's a loud sound. Hear it chirping? That's coming from that. See him under, see him under the rock? making that sound. Probably calling for the other one. Past us. Where did you go? This is the second one we've seen. So they have a really, really nice visitor center here. Unfortunately, it's closed today. Um, you know, it's 4th of July. Um, right now, uh, but there are people working here in ranger stations and it's also kind of during COVID. So um, not all the national parks uh, museums are open quite yet. So after traveling by horseback over a hundred miles in five days, Clark finally found cottonwood trees large enough to build canoes. The Corps had plenty of experience making these canoes since they had already made 13, eight of them out of the cottonwood tree. Most likely, five Corps members spent most of three days carving this type of canoe. It took the BLM staff 200 hours with modern tools to make these demos that you see in front of us. So if you're wondering what cottonwood is, this is cottonwood. So it's very prevalent in Colorado. It's actually our, our state tree, it's so prevalent, but it obviously grows here too in Montana. Um, the leaves actually kind of look like a, a little bit like an aspen tree. Um, and you always find it by water. It loves growing by creeks. And if you always look at the creepy trees that I have in my videos, like my haunted and paranormal videos, um, there are always cottonwoods without leaves on them because they are so creepy in the winter time but this is what they made the canoes out of. As you can see, the cottonwoods get really big. I mean, they get super big. The older they get, the wider they are, so they're perfect for making canoes. And if you look right there, you'll see why they call it cottonwood. In Colorado, it snows in the summertime with that. It drives us crazy. So that's cottonwood. <laughs> As I said, it snows cottonwood when you have them around. So unfortunately, the um, stairs that take you up onto the, the pillars um, have been compromised recently. Um, in other words, they're becoming unstable. Um, so they have them blocked off, but you still can see some of the signatures. So let's see what we can see.
So this very nice ranger is going to show me where the picture graphs are. Um, they're around the corner. Yeah, because we can't get up top. You normally can get up top right here and be able to see um, Clark's signature, but unfortunately the railing is compromised, so we can't get up there right now. So if you come here and the stairs are still closed off, um, when you're at the log cabin, there you want to turn right down a path um, away from the pillars. And there's this wonderful replica of the carving um, along with some of the petroglyphs that you're looking for. So if you have the telephoto and the binoculars, you might want to stop here first so you know what you're looking for up on the rock because there's so many signatures. I mean, every time I put my camera up there, my telephoto, I keep finding more and more and more. I keep missing ones. It's like, I thought I was just in that area and I find more. So really make sure that you bring something so you can see since the stairs um, are closed off. I don't have a date when those are gonna be open again, um, but with the COVID epidemic, um, you know, things have been really slowed down. So you wanna walk a little further beyond the replica that I just showed you. Uh, the rock is behind me um, because you're gonna find the Yellowstone River, the river that came down with the canoes. Um, Sacagawea was with him. Um, she didn't go with Clark. She, I'm sorry, she went with Clark. Uh, she didn't go with Lewis. Um, so she's the one that was directing him in this area. Um, but it's definitely worth seeing this river that they went down and it's quite an impressive river. Also, it's accessible. Uh, you can get a wheelchair. You can see I've got like a concrete path behind me. So let's take a look. The Yellowstone River. Isn't that beautiful? That's a roaring river, I'll tell you that much. Whatever you do, bring bug spray. Oh my goodness. It's 11 o'clock in the morning right now and I didn't think I need to put any on. I am being eaten alive. So <laughs> bug spray, whatever you do. They have this wonderful um, TV display right in front of the interpretive center. What's really cool is I have never seen the flags of the Montana uh, Native American tribes. Um, and so that's really cool. I just love seeing that. They have this nice display that shows you what the flags um, look like and where the different tribes are from. So in the area that we're in is the Crow Agency area. So she's taking me to the left of the pillars show me where I can use my telephoto lens. Oh, I can see some right from here. Some of those signatures. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, was, there's, like over, 2, there's two over 2,000 signatures on this rock? Mm -hmm. And are, are there any other? I mean, where? who are these people? Are they like pioneers or are they? So about four to five different tribes. Mm -hmm. What were the tribes? Um, <laughs> so Crow, Hidatsa, uh, I believe maybe Lakota, Sioux, and Cheyenne, and then I believe they thought it was also possibly Blackfeet. Okay. Um, but of course they're not sure, you know, the meanings, who they were is not definite. Okay. Um, and then there was the fur trade that came here, the Yellowstone Expedition, the U.S. Army. Um, there's frequent camps here. The natives would camp here occasionally, and so would, you know, the U.S. Army. Um, and then the one of the first main steamboats came up here, the Josephine. Um, there was a signature, but it fell off. Oh no, that's disappointing. So there's Yellowstone Expedition signatures on here. Yeah. Um, I, in their journals, they talked about how everyone, you know. All these major groups that come here, they always came up here, looked at Lewis's, I mean, sorry, Clark's signature, um, and they carved their names up there. 
maybe a settler here, but I think someone told me that that is a grave area. I have no idea. So there's no That's headstone strange. over there. Mm -mm. Maybe it's where they believed it, the grave is, but it's... Do they, and they don't know who it is? No, they do know who the, the settler was. I don't know if it's that okay. or if it even is a grave, but someone did tell me that they were protecting a grave, so... Yeah, they're protecting something there, and it most <laughs> likely is a grave. So they've had a lot of problems with uh, rock coming down from the rain. Um, there's like over 2,000 carvings on here. It's really neat from, you know, all uh, decades. Class of 23 is up there, 1923. Um, but you definitely have to come down around the rock. So if you come from the visitor center and go left, you're gonna see quite a few. Bring binoculars, bring telephoto lenses, um, because when you come, the stairs may be not fixed yet, uh, but they are fixing them, so it will be open at one time. So two things that you wanna make sure you have when you come out here, binoculars or a telephoto lens, uh, bring a picnic lunch, there's nothing out here. Um, plenty of water and sunscreen, and whatever you do, bring bug spray. The mosquitoes are so bad. It's 4th of July today, um, and it's not even dusk or early morning, and oh, we're all being eaten alive. I have so many welts. <laughs> I can't even take a picture without them like flying in my ear. So, dead bug spray, big time. Also be aware when you go down some of the dirt trails that have some high grass like this, uh, there are a lot of rattlesnakes in this area. Uh, y'all, you see signs, quite a few signs, um, but just be very careful of that. Um, you're probably perfectly fine on the concrete path because it's pretty wide. Um, they like the grass, the snake in the grass, um, but there's a lot of trails that you can go off in um, that have a lot of tall grass, so you need to be very careful of that. If you're not familiar with rattlesnakes because of where you're from, um, they have to be coiled and wound up um, to be able to bite you. you have to, to, I mean, they can be in any position to bite you, but to really like make distance and get you. And they usually warn you with the rattle, so listen for the rattle. So Pompeii's Pillar, totally recommend it. It is definitely worth a stop. So if you are in uh, the little Bighorn Battlefield area, Billings, Montana, driving through on Highway 90, uh, going west or east, um, definitely make this stop to Pompeii's Pillar. Um, it's not far from the 90, like not far at all. So it's definitely a look-see. Um, I wish the visitor center was open so I could show it to you, uh, but the uh, National Park System is still going through their opening phases from COVID. Um, so I'm just lucky enough that the parks are open while I'm up here. Um, so. Hopefully when you're here, the visitor center will be back open. Um, so I haven't seen, there are outdoor bathrooms um, in case you need to do that. Um, but they do have some vending machines I've seen outdoors here. Um, so if you forget something to drink, um, but it is warm in this area in the summertime. So uh, definitely bring lots of water. Make sure that you catch all our videos on the great state of Montana. Make sure to check out the links in the description. They help support this channel. And thank you so much for coming by. You have no idea how much we appreciate it.